you can imagine through this motion, the skin barrier has been disrupted already. And with the skin that's being peeled off, said human, no humans are actually harmed. Don't worry about it. Right. Welcome back, everyone, to the Chemist Confessions podcast. I'm Gloria. I'm Victoria. This is a human conversation on all the skincare science we talk about on the daily. We are cosmetic chemists, and this year we are kind of reformulating this <laughs> get it, <laughs> our podcast format <laughs> to address some of your burning skincare questions, one key ingredient at a time. And this week is all about ceramides. Yeah, it's uh, I think it's a pretty hot ingredient right now. Um, last year, there was a big push for I think a lot of people wanted to learn more about how to take care of their skin barrier. Yep. And ceramides was definitely that first ingredient that came to everybody's mind. So we're going to definitely do a review of what exactly ceramides is, um, what it actually does for skin and uh, how to use it in your skincare. Yep, so let's dive right into it. What are ceramides, Victoria? All right, so ceramides are predominantly lipid components that are found in the stratum corneum. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually comprise about 30 to 40% of our SC lipids um, by weight, so that's pretty hefty. They play a pretty crucial role in the water retention capacity of our skin. Yeah, so there are a lot of different types of ceramides in your skin, and mm -hmm. you might have heard of the term lipid matrix, mm -hmm. and ceramides are definitely a key part of what makes a matrix so matrixy, because these <laughs> different types have different sizes and different roles in them. Some of the bigger ones act as like the bricks and the mortars, and it creates this layer in skin that's very robust and protects your, um, protects your skin against water loss and invasion of bad stuff. Um, and I should share, as I was doing the ceramide research, I just want to mention how bad Google search is right now. <laughs> I'm sure many of you have noticed that Google AI has been really just uh, pummeling, I think, Google search with all the questions that you might have. So yeah. if you search the term, it'll list like 10 of these questions that you might have. Um, so I found a funny discovery that I want to share just to show how bad Google is at skincare. Uh -huh. um, so one of the questions uh, that Google AI suggests is, what is better than ceramides? So I was curious and I clicked on it. And the highlighted text reads, both ceramides and squalane are lipids that occur naturally and are found in the skin. <sighs> Their functions and benefits differ, but squalane is much better than ceramides due to its stability and long shelf life. Um, I was like, um, wow, that Google is so wrong. <laughs> a lot of questions. First of all, What's naturally producing your skin is squalene, not squalene. Yeah. Squalene is very stable, but... Squalene is not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And ceramides and squalene are two very different, different concepts, things. period. You should not be talking about them in the same sentence. So Google, stop talking about skincare. And guys, just so you know, when you are Googling, know that there, these questions are going to be like the top three things you might find in your search. And they're very wrong. <laughs> yeah. And also ceramides are pretty stable creatures. They're yes. waxy and hard to deal with because they're so stable and robust. <laughs> so there you go, Google. So beware. Not only are fear mongering folks out to get you, so is Bard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So going back to what is ceramides, um, do know that there are currently 12 types of ceramides out there um, in the human stratum corneum. Uh, some of the major ones that you've probably heard of in skincare is your ceramide NP, uh, you'll hear about ceramide AP. Um, there's other ones like NH and AH. These four are actually uh, the main ones uh, really found in SC in terms of total amount. Yeah. So in terms of topically, you will still hear these terms. Just FYI, ceramides have gone through kind of a nomenclature change. So you might hear about stuff like ceramide 3 and 5 and 7. And they've been updated to names like MP is the old ceramide 3. And the reason for that is all these letters are talking about the type of bond and the stuff that's attached to it. Without getting into too much, just know that that's why there is, sometimes you may hear it, um, you, sometimes you may hear about ceramides based on their numbers, sometimes you may hear about it based on these letters. The letters are the new nomenclature we're going forward with. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so the thing to know about ceramides in our skin is that um, it's actually been pretty well studied in terms of what it does for our skin. Mm -hmm. um, Topically ceramides, that's a different story oh, that we'll get, get into. Get there. <laughs> um, but in terms of looking at it and understanding its impact in our skin, um, there are a couple factors at play here. One of the things that they've looked at is definitely weather. So you've always wondered whether in skincare, does it matter? 
interestingly, uh, there is a group that actually looked at this is a they used mixed gender subjects, which you'll find is important uh, moving forward. They wanted to look at their lib account um, during the winter and how that changed seasonally. Um, and so they actually found, and this is interesting, that ceramide mass was actually slightly increased, which you think like, oh, does that mean, but doesn't that mean our skin barrier should be better? It's like, no, no, no. It actually means that um, what's happening is they have enhanced keratinization, which mm-hmm. is skin shedding. Mm-hmm. And so that's scaliness. And so that's the cause of that ceramide increase. Skin's like, I don't want, I don't want it. I don't like it. I'm not happy. Yes. And I feel like this whole episode is going to be an attack on your age because this study <laughs> also found that in young adults, the mass of ceramides remain much more stable, mm-hmm. even under different season conditions and just better at maintaining your water reservoir despite external changes can't say the same about older people (laughs) right so that leads us to age um another lab they actually wanted to test on females Mm -hmm. between the ages of 20 to 60 years old and what's interesting is they found that all major lipid species were depleted in the winter compared with summer and so this is um kind of twofold is that um so it's slightly different than um the previous study and that they actually are feel the general thought is that females mm-hmm. actually have it more difficult because that we actually do deal with uh ceramide uh depletion more so than males i knew it <laughs> i knew it <laughs> so they found this depletion in the winter uh, mirroring the aging influence on the stratum corneum lipid levels and they actually the kind of sad thing is this is not the only study that has been able to show these same results. There are other studies out there that have further confirmed this. Yep, for sure. And I did want to um, share this other line about age. Mm -hmm. Um, In another um, Ceramide textbook, they actually write, it is now generally accepted that there is an overall decrease in total stratum corneum lipids by approximately 30%. In the elderly 30 percent sounds really horrifically high <laughs> it's like i know yeah that number is terrifying if you cut a pizza and you lost off 30 percent of the pizza there's not a lot of pizza left. that's a very significant portion yeah, of, exactly. of the pie yeah but, very hmm. much well i really like this last study victoria found because um you will you uh, a lot of times when we talk about ceramides the first type of skin that people reference to is people with compromised skin or eczema and how your the ratio and the level of ceramides in your skin has changed because of these conditions. So oftentimes ceramides are associated with dry skin and compromised skin barrier. But what's interesting is it actually is a factor in those with acne as well. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people find that odd because when you think of acne, you think of oily skin. But um, there's actually a study that's shown that acne affected skin demonstrated overall lower levels of ceramides with notable reductions in a lot of the main ones, the ceramide NH, AH, um, as well as EOS and EOH. And they actually found these differences even more apparent in the winter months. And they have also further explained that lower ceramide levels reflected an increase in tool and acne compared with healthy skin. (gasps) which only partly resolves in the summer. Ooh. So I think that's very, I don't know. I feel like that's a, um, I'm really glad that we can talk about this here because I think with acne, a lot of people are very afraid to put on moisturizer. Yes. Um, but they don't realize that you really need moisturizer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we talked about in our um, acne episode last year about how inflammation and these actives that tend to be pretty harsh for acne leads to a lot of dry skin but acne individuals are still like in fear of moisturizers for good reason but at the end of the day it's once you figure that out can actually help your journey quite a bit totally um so that hopefully gives you a good picture of what ceramides do for skin and how their levels can impact skin as we age and go through life changes but we're going to take a quick break are you in need of a ceramide fix check out our cold favorite slugging companion bon voyage this represents our chemist's blood, sweat, and tears, and a lot of dollar-dollar bills <laughs> that just went into this one. Well, ultimately, we want to create the salve with a whole 1% of ceramides. It's a tiny but mighty tube that can be used for all your pesky dry patches, face, lips, elbow, wherever you need. So check out Bon Voyage, and don't forget to use the promo code CC Podcast 2024 for 15% off your first order. All right, so we just talked a lot about ceramides in your skin, um, naturally found in your skin, what might affect it and what what might cause the levels to go down. Mm. But now we have to address, uh, so if my ceramides are getting depleted, does applying ceramides topically help? And mm. also I keep hearing about it with eczema. Now I don't have eczema. Do I still need ceramides? 
Oh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think the easiest way for us to tackle this is we'll talk from our perspective. Yes. Right now in the ingredient landscape, we see that there are three realms of ceramides mm-hmm. stuff you can get. Um, so there are going to be your blends. So these are things like SK influx. You might hear about the ratios and these are ratios of your ceramides, your fatty acids and your cholesterol. And so that's one arena. Mm-hmm. You're going to get ones that are single ceramides or even blends, but these are actual ceramides. That's your second group. And then finally, you have your pseudo ceramides. Yeah. So we're not going to cover too much about pseudo ceramides in this yeah. episode. Um, you might hear about it. It, it can be touted in all sorts of names, right? It can be um, plant-based ceramides, ceramide derivatives, ceramide parts. Ceramide precursors. Yeah. There's a lot of names that go into it. So and... When you're looking at ingredient lists, we kid you not, it gets really crazy because you can hear. So for plant ceramides, it might be linked to names like phytosterols, which is actually more of a cholesterol analog than ceramides, but whatever. <laughs> uh, or actual uh. <laughs> or actual ceramides like ceramide MP, EOS, that's just plant derived versus, I guess, the typically bacteria produced synthesized ceramides. But then you will also even see um, see ingredients like rice bran oil and yuzu extract that gets positioned as plant ceramides. So this is why we don't want to talk about them. <laughs> yeah, so other categories, very diverse. <laughs> very diverse. We don't really know. Quality depends on the, varies. Yeah, depends on the product. So we're going to skip this. Yes. So let's actually just talk about topical ceramides. What does it actually do for skin? Yes. So we are going to talk about, we're going to open the, this up with a discussion on single ceramides. Mm-hmm. So not the ones that come in a pre-blend in a delivery system, just single ceramides. We found this really great paper where, um, again, we're moving away from retinoids now. So uh, <laughs> we're going to step away from the 200 yeah. people. Quality, not so good. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be extrapolating a lot of these. So bear with us here. This is an ex vivo <laughs> human skin study, which means... Um, the skin has been removed from the human. And in this case, it's from tape stripping the skin. So you can imagine through this motion, the skin barrier has been disrupted already. And with the skin that's being peeled off, said human, no humans are actually harmed. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, they apply these formulas that contain just a single ceramide or combinations of at most two ceramides. And what they did is they did a lot of microscopy work to look at the structure of your skin barrier. And what they found is that interestingly, uh, and I think this is always a question we get to is like, does topical ceramides actually interact with your lipid mm. matrix? They, the answer is you, we don't really know for sure, but it does seem to impact the structure of this um, skin barrier anyway. And we should highlight without going down the rabbit hole is that structure is actually very important to your skin barrier health. So this is actually quite a important topic for ceramides because, um, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize when they think of skin barrier disruption, they're looking at the packing of mm-hmm. this bilayer. And that's that packing and the integrity of it is what really matters. So hence all this work done on it. Yep. The conclusion of this play paper was application of formulation containing either a single ceramide or two ceramides and a fatty acid on the regenerating uh, stratum corneum resulted in denser lateral lipid packing of the SC lipid in compromised skin. It's a good thing. The strongest effect was observed after application of a formulation containing a single ceramide, hmm. which before you're like, oh, uh, OK, I see a lot of ceramide, AP, EOP, yeah, blah, 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 blend. blend. So you tell me I just need one. Ah, before we get there, I should highlight this quote from the paper. <laughs> a great quote. The physical stability of formulations was examined during the period of six months. During storage, no crystals were observed. However, when ceramide MP or ceramide EOP were introduced in the same formulation, crystals were formed. Results not shown. Therefore, all experiments were produced using ceramide NS and ceramide Ooh, EOS. Oh, interesting. NS is in. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, the takeaway here is these, this group of people was like, MP difficult. I they don't want to deal with it. cosmetic chemists. <laughs> yeah. They're like, it doesn't want to melt. Screw it. <laughs> we're not using it. So this is just to highlight that. Um, well, I guess it's a little sideways, but we were formulating the bon voyage. We used ceramide MP and it was pretty bad. And we had to <laughs> do a lot of different finagling to it and down to the processing, not just the formula. You thought this was about ceramides. No, this is actually our chemist therapy hour. Plight of the chemist. <laughs> and this is why the conclusion that you, the conclusion here shouldn't be, I just need one ceramide. Yeah. You need one and or a blend of well formulated ceramides. And that leads us down to the other seg- segue. The other type ingredient type is pre-blends that come with 
um, ceramides and cholesterol and fatty acids already in a delivery vehicle. And how does it do for skin? Yeah. And before we even go there, I, I do want to mention that um, that's kind of the one tricky part about ceramides is your ceramide product is only going to be good as your chemist. Um, just mm. because it is so difficult to formulate is very finicky. Crystalline, when they mentioned that they saw crystals, that means topically that ceramide is not going to absorb it's not going to do anything for skin yeah. yeah and that's what gloria means by being too stable that it poses quite a challenge and um a lot of people ask like oh ceramides are I, i'm definitely doing um going off tangent but people ask like oh why is it so expensive why is it so hard to know percentages that this is actually partially that reason yeah cool all right so going into blends let me share a study so there's a study on they wanted to study dry skin. And so they wanted to basically understand what do ceramides do for skin at the 24 hour mark, the 28 day mark, and then seven days after moisturizing. So that means so for after seven days, they, um, sorry, after they finish the 28 days, they stop use for seven days. And they want to know what happens to skin. Cold turkey on moisturizer <laughs> for seven days. I know. <laughs> That's aggressive. And they purposely wanted to test on what they call senile xerosis. And that is older people i really okay yeah science is very cruel <laughs> senile yeah, very rude all around that is very rude i just mm. <laughs> if you were trying to get a pregnant and you're a little older older than 25 they're like oh your pregnancy is considered geriatric mm -hmm. but like i'm 35 like how much? Yeah, when the doctor talks to you, you're like, "Bitch, what'd you call me?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's very, very demoralized. Call him C now. I think is like one level above geriatric. And I will have you know, the mean age here is 54, which is, what? Old. yeah, it's quite a, quite rude. As me. Anyways, so this is what they did was, um, they did a split site. Um, they tested only on 24 subjects, quite small, uh, predominantly female here. And they were evaluated to have mild to moderate xerosis, which is mild to moderate dry skin. So they applied, and I should also mention that they, I, I, I said split face, but I'm sorry, it's split, it's two sites um, and it's on their shin. So this is where they're evaluating. Oh. Yes, sorry. I, I'm, I'm so used to saying split face, but it's split Split, split shin. <laughs> two shins. Two shins. <laughs> not, not, we're not splitting any shins. <laughs> two separate shins because we typically come with two. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Explaining science sometimes is so wild. Okay. All right. After one application of ceramide, the ceramide containing moisturizer, they saw an increase in skin hydration. They saw improvement in tool as well as skin pH because I think what's important to know is that when you deal with dry skin, your skin pH does change. So they're monitoring that as well. Um, and so this was at the 24 hour mark. It was statistically significant. At 28 days, this is then they are now doing twice daily application. They saw an even more significant improvement in skin hydration, barrier function, and skin pH mm -hmm. at all time points. And then. At day 28, they also saw a significant decrease in wrinkles and texture on the ceramide treated side. And then seven days after this whole moisturizer study where they stopped use, they still saw that the ceramide treated side had superior, was superior for skin hydration tool, skin pH and wrinkles. And so that's why um, hopefully this gives you an idea that ceramides actually can be very helpful for dry skin. I, yeah, I actually think it's, um these studies, again, out of the retinal realm are a lot smaller, but still pretty cool to see such a market difference, mm -hmm. especially I think what's rare in um, a lot of study is a benchmark, like a placebo benchmark. Mm -hmm. Sometimes though, um, having this comparison shows that ceramide definitely does help. And we'll put the charts up on screen. You'll see that across all um, parameters, the blue ceramide group does, uh, does better. I will say the one, the one set of data that I'm kind of like, okay is the skin ph one yeah because that one is a little it's funky. like yeah. yeah it's by a tenth of a difference sometimes so that's kind of hard to say for sure for sure and then at the end of the study it kind of like comes much closer together mm -hmm. so anyway but skin hydration tool even though they line up pretty closely it's pretty cool that consistently across all time points you see that difference totally so hopefully that gives you an idea and we should mention that the ceramide they use is a blend mm -hmm. of three ceramides um and that should give you an idea of how, um, I guess, how helpful a ceramide can be, especially if you are one that's prone to dry skin. 
even though being called senile is not nice, the study is actually kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to just try to look past that. Forgive them. <laughs> All right. Um, and finally, we should look at another pre-blend. And this is a blend that Gloria and I actually like a lot. Um, you might have heard of it if you are a ceramide fanatic, I guess. Um, it's called SK Influx. Um, yeah. SK Influx created by a supply ingredient supplier called Evonik. It's very popular in the cosmetic science realm in general. Mm -hmm. So like if you search it, um, it will come up on Reddit. We do use this blend as well in our Miss Reliable. They have done their own internal testing on it and it's pretty interesting. So they actually did a very interesting study. And this is, this is a smaller study with just 10 volunteers of healthy females between 18 to 25 years old. Even though it's small, I think this is pretty cool because this time we're not looking at compromised skin barrier, um, but just healthy individuals that's fairly young. And I do think this is actually pretty interesting to us because even though you do not fall, uh, even if you don't fall into this category, ingredients showing some sort of improvement for compromised skin can sometimes be a little easier than showing improvement for those yeah. with perfectly normal skin at a young age. Um, so this one, they did dive into what they really wanted to look at is their delivery technology because that's one of the selling points of SK Influx is it's packaged and it's convenient, relatively easy to use formula that works. Um, so they looked at placebos and also you know, emulsions with ceramide. And the results are pretty interesting and we find really... I don't know why this was a choice, but they actually compared it to a 1% hydrocortisone cream. Yeah. So um, one thing that they definitely want to understand is hydration. So they did do a tool study um, and we are actually only fork fo forking. <laughs> oh, we're forking. <laughs> That's a very inappropriate day. <laughs> we are only focusing on the placebo formulations here because uh, we just want to look at SK Influx. So placebo, empty lotion versus the lotion with SK Influx. They did the tool study and they, um, this is after 28 days of use on these 10 subjects, they did see a significantly lower tool, which is good for the placebo ceramide emulsion with SK Influx. So yay. Um, but another interesting aspect is they wanted to look at inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, so they actually did an inflammation study and they did it on a mouse model and human subjects mm -hmm. both. And they did see that it performed on par with a 1% hydrocortisone cream. So I thought that was unique because um, this is for, um, and you might be asking how did they, is this individuals with inflammation? No, they actually induced inflammation onto skin and then applied it. Um, so that should give you an idea of what it can do for healthy skin and also those that either might be doing a retinoid treatment or mm -hmm. dealing with any sort of skin inflammation, a great solution there. Yeah. So this is kind of the gamut of ceramide studies you might see out there. There's, <laughs> it's, it's hard it's because really hard. there's a lot more, but yeah. some of them, a lot of them are looking at very specific products or specific conditions and they're generally not big so sometimes it's really hard to tie all of these pieces together yeah but i think after we survey the landscape and look at these studies um i think some of the key takeaways is if you have dry skin or any sort of um skin condition ranging from eczema or you're just a little sensitive or even acneic skin yeah this can be a great um great avenue to explore yeah um however if you have normal skin, maybe you realize your moisturizer doesn't have ceramides and skin is great. It doesn't need to be, you don't have to force it in as well. Um, I think this is just one of those ingredients that, you know, as we become more cognizant of skin barrier, you want to do better for it. You're dealing with dry skin as we age. Um, definitely one of those ingredients, Gloria, and I would recommend checking out. Yep. Um, so hopefully that gives you guys a good idea of how ceramides can perform topically. Yep, so we're gonna take a quick break <laughs> and after we come back, we'll take a quick look at how to use ceramide in your routine, when to use ceramide in your routine, and also some of the products you'll find on the market. Last month, we did a retinoid special covering tretinoin, adapalene, retinol, retinal, and bakuchiol. Sorry, bakuchiol, I keep doing that, sorry. If you feel like you missed out and don't have time to listen to the podcast, head to our blog. You'll find in-depth guides to these topics and a lot more, so check it out. All right, so. Now let's talk about how to use ceramides in your routine. Yes, and I guess the big question is, um, how do you layer? Does it go well with other actives? Is it a good addition? Yeah, so we should start off with um, most ceramides you find are going to be an emulsion, and a lot of times they're already gonna be in your moisturizers or cr and creams. So I think it's pretty easy there. I did wanna share one really interesting study I found. I know you guys thought we were done with studies, but there's just one more thing I thought was cool. 
So they actually looked at an MVE ceramide moisturizing cream and they wanted to use it in conjunction with um, azelaic acid. So 15% azelaic acid that's used for rosacea patients. Mm. And they found that, um, so after applying uh, the treatment, they apply the ceramide moisturizer and they found that it was um, significantly less burning and stinging on the side with the ceramide moisturizer. And I thought that was really cool because um, I think a lot of people don't realize how maybe they just kind of think of um, ceramides as like, oh, it's just like a skin barrier thing, yeah. similar to like all the moisturizing it's like stuff. A you moisturizer put in. plus. Exactly. So um, for those of you that feel like you're, you know, you might deal with any sort of stinging um, from some of your higher dose actives, um, even things like vitamin C sometimes with the lower pH, this might be a great thing to have in your moisturizer. Yeah, so generally speaking, in your routine, keep it where you keep your moisturizer. So it will probably follow order of cleanse your serums, like your hydrating serums, maybe some treatments like vitamin C. Mm -hmm. um, you can go then go into your more emulsion-based treatments like the azelaic acid yeah. or retinoids and then wrap everything up with the moisturizer. Totally. So in terms of landscape, Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there are a lot of ceramide products on the market, there especially are. because it's so popular. You can find everything. Generally speaking, there are, I think two major types of uh, product you'll find. You'll find it in slightly lighter creams that comes with some of these pre-blends like the Vonic SK Influx or other delivery vehicles like our Mr. Reliable and CeraVe falls into this category. They tend to have a texture that's a little bit more pleasing for a wider range of people. Mm -hmm. Even if you have oily skin, you may find that um, these creams are not that heavy. Um, because they are in these d delivery vehicles, their neat ceramide level isn't as high, but it will still deliver those ceramide benefits. So this is perfect for those with normal to dry skin and for people who are just looking into, you know, entering the ceramide, ceramide realm to help with their active game and yeah. whatnot. And then you have your dollar bill ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are what we call the heavily tested, the products that kind of spark ratio debates. They are pummeled and full of neat ceramides. And these are your classic SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid and the Epion's Cream. I think these are, um, hopefully this is a very simple way of figuring out how to shop for ceramides. Yeah. There is one type of ceramide product I feel like you we are technically skeptical of. It's usually very thin fluids that yeah. are not very milky, like kind of clear and tell that they're ceramide products. I find those are very, we're very skeptical. Sketchy. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, Mr. Reliable and Sarah they are like lighter weight moisturizers and Epion's and Suicles Triple Lipid are heavy creams. Usually that's a type of product that can hold a good amount of ceramide. Yeah. Balm Voyage is a full ass <laughs> balm. We have seen ceramide serums like Victoria mentioned. That's like, oh, a very light, refreshing gel. It looks like an essence, like yeah. a clear essence. Yeah. You're and like, the, hmm. the texture is like not even very oily. Yeah. It's very... Oh, yes, yeah, so that's a good takeaway. Yes, yeah, ceramides do live a, have a little bit of a film. Yeah, uh, it's waxy. At the finish, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah, so those th those type of textures were like a little, little skeptical. Yeah, so hopefully that gives you a few tips and tricks on how to navigate this arena. Mm -hmm. um, but with that, um, hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use ceramides. Um, let's answer some questions. Yep. Um, we pulled you guys on your ceramide questions, and here's a, here's a couple. Uh, at con, <laughs> as sometimes I hear people talk about vegan ceramides or pseudo ceramides. What are those? Great question. <laughs> um, it can be a range of things, and that that is one of the um, categories of products we didn't really talk about in the product landscape. There's a lot of those products out there. We the the ceramides there itself, the quality can vary. It's really hard to say without looking at each individual product. Mm -hmm. um, my big tip there is. Do a quick look at the ingredient list. You still want to see the word ceramide at the yeah. very least, like sphingolipid lipid on the ingredient list. The extract ones, um, I haven't seen a lot of data on it. So anyway, just yeah, yeah. check those out. At soul.me asks, why are ceramides expensive? I see the products marketed at all different price points. Yeah, so the actual, we can tell you, Gore and I, ceramide actual raw material is very expensive. Very expensive. It's also why we are very proud to have 1% in our bomb. Try finding that elsewhere. I dare you. Yeah, Anyways. we pummeled it in there for yeah. sure. So it's very expensive. Um, it's uh, difficult to synthesize, difficult to formulate with. Um, and so that's the actual ceramide. So this is why, you know, Gore and I, we kind of harp on the actual material is very important and why we don't like the extract parts. 
hopefully that gives you an idea of how that works. All right. Next question. Uh, at Signet Skin. <laughs> <laughs> Best ceramides for oilier skin, or is it all about the formulation as a whole? Oh, that's a great question. Great question. It's about the formulation <laughs> as a whole, for sure. I think there isn't, again, um, we kind of... Ceramides is a hard topic for us to talk about because the science can get super, super duper complex. So in terms of if you're saying, hey, is ceramide MP but in the EOS for oily skin, there is not going to be a takeaway there. Yeah. It's generally speaking, um, blends, um, like I mentioned, something like a Ms. Reliable or CeraVe that comes in a delivery vehicle that can be delivered in a lighter texture can be best for oilier skin. That's the route to try because something like a skin circles triple lipid might make you cry because it's super heavy. It just feels too nourishing. It's too much of a film on face. Yeah. It doesn't feel comfortable. Exactly. So yeah. I think that's the better avenue to go for uh, people with oily skin. And yeah, serum my quality and the formulation as a whole is definitely a factor. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's it for the Ceramides episode. We hope it's helpful as you guys are shopping in the moisturizing realm. Um, but otherwise, Gloria, if they have a question, where can they find us? You can find us on our website at chemistconfessions.com. Check out the blog there. You can DM us on Instagram at chemist.confessions. We do pull you guys regularly on questions so we can address them here on the podcast. But you can also email us at info at chemistconfessions.com. And we will see you guys next week. Um, more moisturizing. Heck yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.